Listen now to this word from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 through 22. For he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death the hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into a dwelling place for God. Uh, Y'all, this is a time where the world feels especially divided, uh, not only in our country, but around the world. Uh, the pandemic, um, in some ways, there was this universal sense of it affecting all of us, but it also um, has been something that has made it so obvious uh, who uh, is most at risk in our community. A dividing wall doesn't just have to be a physical barrier. A dividing wall can be who has access to be treated with healthcare. A dividing wall can be uh, that people of color are more at risk, right? I imagine many of you uh, are, are heavy hearted. Um, the political climate here continues to um, seem to get uh, more and more divisive. And yet we worship a Lord who came so that, you hear that, so that, in order that, like a part of Christ's purpose, part of his purpose was to tear down walls of hostility to tear down whatever separates people. And it can be all sorts of things. And in many cases, it is in between one individual and the next. There are different barriers, different walls that we build to protect ourselves, to help us understand uh, or to create some sort of uh, identity that can only be built when we build it over against somebody a sort of tribalism that rather than people belonging, it's about people being excluded so that uh, we feel like we, our identity is based on the tribe. In the Ephesians passage, the dividing wall is, uh, the Greek there is actually for a partition. It's a, a partition to separate people. It's, it's not just simply, uh, you know, a wall uh, that marks a boundary. It was the wall, the word that was used for the wall in the sanctuary that separated the Gentiles. And if a Gentile crossed over into that space, they should be killed. That's the wall that Paul said, Jesus came to tore down, tear down. Whenever I think about the divisions of today, I think it's so important to remember that divisions of Jesus's time were by and large, much greater, much deeper. Paul was asking, the people of Ephesus was asking his Jewish brothers and sisters to put away long held hatreds and hurts. And some of them understandably justified why there was so much hate. But to put that aside, so surely we can put aside 
whatever uh, we're holding on to. I think of uh, a parent who has children who um, just hate each other and how painful that would be. I think pains a parent more than uh, their children uh, being at odds with one another. That's what it's like for God. When he sees uh, the people he has created in God's image warring against each other. But we still build walls. We know this. We know that Christ came to tear down the walls of hostility. But we build walls. What walls have you built in your own life? What walls have been built just as importantly to keep you out? What walls have you encountered where you weren't welcome? You were uh, told in one way or another, you do not belong here. Have you ever been um, told you couldn't come to a communion table? That you weren't welcome at a table? Have you ever not been welcome at a club where you didn't fit in? Have you not been welcome at a school because you didn't come from the right background? Not welcome at a dinner party because your opinions didn't match up with those of the people at the party. Not welcome at church because you didn't talk the right way, didn't have the right education or whatever it was that made you feel not welcome, didn't hold the right political position. Whatever that hurt is, wherever you have felt unwelcome, remember that and then try to tear down any walls that you have helped build up. You know, Robert Frost's poem, it's, uh, it is quaint, but it is spot on. The mending wall, right? Uh, there, where it is, we need no wall. He is all pine, and I am apple orchard. My apple trees will never get across and eat the cones under his pines. I tell him, and he says, good fences make good neighbors. Spring is the mischief in me, and I wonder if I could put a notion in his head, why do they make good neighbors? Isn't it where there are cows? But here there are no cows. Before I built a wall, I'd asked to know what I was walling in or walling out, and to whom I was like to give offense. I think sometimes what we wall out is um, it begins with walling God out. I think it's almost easier to think about uh, how we have uh, boxed God out of compartments or spheres of our life. Easier to conceive that than to think about where we have um, pushed people or groups away. Um, it's hard for us to conceive the places where we have uh, pushed people away, where we have built walls, because we do that for our own um, security, and we're not even aware, maybe. But I, I do think it's easier for us to think about the walls that we build in between ourselves and God, places in our lives where we're like, no, uh, I know that this is the right thing to do, God, but you can't have this. I can't change this part of me. And we've walled off God. Paul says that Jesus came to preach peace. I love the idea of preaching peace because it's uh, this claim that one can speak peace into being. What does speaking peace into being look like when it is about a separation, a wall that we've built in between us and God. I think it's confession. We said that that's what it is for, for me. It's, it starts with confession, that peace often starts with confession. You know, to recognize, I mean, 
living into this, that the dividing walls have been torn down, it's, it starts with recognizing that I have built some of the walls, not just that there are walls. That's how you move past hostility, is you own it. You own where you built walls. You own that you've built off or walled off God. And that confession, that humility that comes with that, makes it a lot easier to be gracious as God has been gracious with us. We recognize just how much we need it. It can take the hate out of your heart. Any hate, any, the smallest of hate. We don't need that in our hearts. It doesn't belong there. So in confessing, in recognizing that we all fall short, I believe there's a peace, a peace that only Christ can give, a shalom, a wholeness, a place where you can move freely throughout all the earth almost uh, in this divine sort of realm where you have the peace of Christ wherever you go. And that's what being in a place where there's no dividing walls maybe looks like where you're able just to walk with God. At the communion table, uh, there's a long history of people being walled off from the table, uh, the, uh, or fenced, you know, fenced off, or you had to have a communion token where you confessed maybe before you would come to the table, you had to say the right sort of, you know, you had to be Roman Catholic, you had to be Lutheran, not everyone was Welcome at the table. Something that gives me hope is that the body of Christ has, is and continues to be moving past those divisions that people, uh, those barriers that people, humans have uh, created around the table. The table, the communion table is not a Presbyterian table. It's not an American table. It's not a French table. Kenyan table, it is Christ's table. And so we do not lay claim to this as our domain. Rather, we come as guests invited. And we come seeking the peace of Christ. And so as you prepare and gather your elements, um, I pray that uh, you invite that peace and that you bring, uh, bring that or Take the risk, be courageous in confessing where the walls might be in your life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.